high noon in beautiful Tallahassee. Great to have your company on 91.5 FM's Showcase. I'm Dan MacDonald with a raft of artistic events, starting off with a visit by the renowned sculptor of wood, Mark Lindquist. I have a rare recording from the year 1960 with the late Wiley Housewright directing the University Singers, which I'll contrast with a present-day composition by Ellen Tefa Zwillich, played by the Boston Musica Viva. It's entitled Chamber Symphony, with Richard Pittman conducting. What you're hearing is a beautiful rendition of Stravinsky's Firebird Suite with Maestra Miriam Burns leading the Tallahassee Symphony Orchestra, which is to be found on their 2008 CD and which I'm delighted to play for you in about 12 minutes, plus or minus a few seconds. Come go with me to meet my famous guest, wood sculptor Mark Lindquist, and the executive director of the Gadsden Arts Council, Grace Malloy. Thank you for joining me on Showcase. Oh, it's great to be here, Dan. Thank you, Dan. I've been wanting to talk with you, Mark, for a long, long time. My grandfather on my mother's side was a carpenter all his life. He was at work every day until about his 96th year. And when I was a boy, I watched him handle the wood. And he would run his hand over the wood because he appreciated the grain in the wood. It was almost a reverent thing. And I think you approach wood in the same category as a reverent possibility. Well, it's interesting that you use that term reverent. Um, If you remember, there was a book uh, written by Eric Sloan called A Reverence for Wood. And that is something that touches us all. It's ingrained in us. It's part of our DNA, it seems like, this uh, acceptance of this uh, most noble material. Your dad was a woodturner, wasn't he? Is his name Mel? Yeah, Mel Mel? Lindquist. He was uh, also worked up until his passing. He was 89, worked Uh right up until the end and and passed away in 2000. Yeah, he was an engineer. He's actually an aeronautical engineer and became a... uh, an engineer and manager of quality control for General Electric, and then retired in the 60s and uh, pursued his hobby as a second career from the 60s all the way on through. You've got to have a good knowledge of machinery to do what you do, chainsaws and other things. Well, I was really fortunate. You know, my father was a master machinist, and he passed a lot of that information on to me. But not only that, Growing up in Schenectady, New York, our uh, next-door neighbor was a nuclear physicist, and he really didn't like working for General Electric. He was a farm boy, and when he got home from work, he would put on his overalls and come over, and we'd build go-karts and minibikes before those things were. And so that technology, that go-kart technology, has been a very important thing even in the the work that I do today. I mean, I I call it advanced go-kart technology. It's really... (laughs) <laughs> robotics, you know, that I'm doing now. but uh, Mark, you've been doing this for over 40 years, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. And you've had some significant shows like the Smithsonian, for example. Isn't that true? Yeah, I was very fortunate. It was a wonderful thing to have the, the Renwick Gallery. of the. It was then called the National Museum of American Art. It's now the Smithsonian American Art Museum that they hosted my uh, 25-year retrospective. It was a, just a wonderful experience and a terrific honor. What an honor, absolutely. I want to ask my friend Grace Malloy about this wonderful show that's coming up at the Gadsden Art Center. In what galleries? In the Sarah May Love Gallery and the Zoe Galloway Exhibit Hall on the main floor. And when is that going to open up? That opens Friday, September 10th, and it runs through Saturday, October 23rd. It's going to be something we'll all want to go to. I know my listeners are just wanting to get all the facts about this great show of Mark Lindquist's works and where it's going to be. And what are the gallery hours, by the way? We're open Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and we do offer guided exhibition tours for any group of four or more free of charge. You've had some great shows recently, and we have had that on the air here at WFSQ every week about the things that you're doing there. Thank you so much for your coverage. You know, I wanted to mention that Grace has been just such an incredible director for the Gadsden Arts Center. She's built the uh, permanent collection, expanded the facility, 
has just uh, taken the Gadsden Art Center to new heights. It's becoming a very uh, important and recognized institution. It's gaining great stature throughout the entire area where there's so much going on with galleries and museums and so forth. We're proud of you. Thank you. We're fortunate to have a lot of widespread support. And I'd like to point out with this exhibition in particular, this is the first time this broad a range of Mark's work will have been shown in any one venue. Many venues will select works that are more popular among collectors at the time or more prized by museums. But if you really want to gain a feel for the artist himself, you'll see every major series of creative inquiry in this show, and it's a catalog to go along with it to explain it. And it's really a special event that I hope everybody will enjoy. I'm not going to miss it. I'm going to be there. I did want to ask Mark about spalted wood. Tell me something about spalted wood. Well, spalted wood has a a really interesting history particularly for me. In the 50s, you know, my father had land in the upstate New York Adirondacks, 100 acres, and he discovered spalted wood on his land in the 50s. And I was, you know, it was the late 50s that I got involved with it. I was right there with him working with spalted wood. It's a condition that the wood has decomposed. And for example, a white birch tree that's fallen over, you know, we're cutting a path through the woods and there's this white birch tree and he cut into it with the chainsaw and there were these black lines in it. Well, it come to find out that he thought it was watermarked wood, but finding out about it subsequently when I began writing articles on it, a fine woodworking magazine, the first articles that had been published on spalted wood, that the wood was subject to decomposition where an airborne spore would attack the wood and various fungi would begin waging war for possession of territory of the wood. And the places where the fungi clashed, there would be a formation of carbonaceous deposits, which were called zone lines. And those zone lines were surprisingly like like calligraphy and wonderful graphic black stylistic designs in the wood. And it turned out that the term spalting was a New England colloquialism. Loggers had different terms for what shape the log was in. If, If you hit it with an axe and it would ring, it was sound. And if it was rotten, it was dozy. Then this sort of in between stage was called spalting. And there's a a root word, spalten, uh, which is German. And so there it is. It's spalted wood. And it's sort of become a mainstay of the wood-turning world. I understand that you introduced some innovative methods of working with wood that attracted a lot of attention. For example, circles in wood or even including the bark on a piece of wood that you were forming into an art piece. Tell me how you got these ideas that were so different. Well, you know, there's an old saying that um, you walk into the museum and you see the uh, ancient, you know, Chinese vessel and you say they've been copying my work, you know. (laughs) (laughs) There's really nothing new under the sun, really. It's just that the timing was such, having been an apprentice to a potter in the 60s and 70s, early 70s, I was exposed to a different way of looking at material and technique and the philosophy of working with um, materials in a new way. And I translated that information into into working with wood. For example, the uh, revered Japanese potter Hamada and uh, Rosanjan, both of those potters were innovative in their approaches. It affected and influenced a lot of California potters, the the California funk artists, Robert Arneson and um, Peter Volkos. I was influenced by those people. And, you know, it was a wide open opportunity for wood. It had not been done before. It was a, it was a pristine moment. I was able to do a lot of experimenting at a time coming from a a background of fine art, uh, drawing, painting, and sculpture, that I could take a lot of information and sort of infuse that information into the material. It was just a really unique moment to have the technique, having a a lot of technical ability that, that came from working with my father, and then a lot of information from, you know, a college education and an apprenticeship. So bringing these things together was like an explosion. You were very fortunate to have a man like Mel as your dad. Yeah, someone recently at a conference said, I I chose the right uh, parents. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I do have a question I want to ask you. Just recently, 
the American Association of Wood Turners honored you, Mark Lindquist, with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Did they give you a trophy when they honored you with that award? Well, it wasn't, was it wood? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a trophy. It was really a plaque. Uh-huh. And yes, they did. And um, it was really kind of wonderful because I was there at the very beginning of the organization, was one of the founding members, actually the first founding business member, and helped to found the organization from the beginnings. And I was also, we gave the pillars of the of the movement, the old what we call the old guys, uh-huh. uh, you know, uh, Bob Stocksdale, Rudy Osonick, Ed Malthrop, my father, Dale Nish, James Pristini, the real founders of the American craft woodturning movement. I was instrumental in getting them their first awards. And so finally, 25 years later, it's come back to me. And now I'm one of the new old guys. Could I ask you, in this wonderful show that's coming up very soon, and I'll ask Grace to tell us all about it once more before we leave, what is your favorite piece that's on display at this show? Well, you know, I think probably, I mean, you know, they're all like children, you know, and it's hard to, it's really hard to say. But, you know, one of the things that I've been doing over the last 10 years is working with photography, and I don't really show it much. And the reason is because I want to keep it to myself, and I don't need to, you know, I, I'm not uh, uh, economically challenged to show my photography. So I'm very much experimental with it. It's motion blur photography, and I'm printing on canvas, the wide format. And uh, there's a piece called Conga, which is a really special piece that's kind of a favorite to me right now. And it's not wood, but it's mounted on a wood frame. <laughs> so I'm very excited about that. And, and there are new pieces. There are a couple of pieces in uh, Black Ash Burl that are very special to me right now. I'm going to be looking for that conga, especially when I visit this show. And Grace, tell us more about this show once again. The exhibition opens Friday night, September 10th at 6 p.m. And Mark will be in the gallery speaking to our visitors at 6.30 that night. That will continue through 9 o'clock. The exhibition continues Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. through October 23rd. And please call me and request your own guided group tour. We have our Corps of Docents standing by to give everybody a tour of this wonderful show. And it's a wonderful place to come, too. Well, you know, it's interesting to me to have the opportunity to show in a local venue in hometown. I mean, my work is shown throughout the world, literally, and and I don't really have an opportunity very often to participate locally. The Gadsden Arts Center has been so generous in um, mounting this exhibition, and Grace has done such an incredible job, and Angie Berry, the curator. I feel very fortunate to be able to participate locally and on a level that this is being done with the professional catalog and and all of that. So I'm, I'm just really pleased to have the opportunity. Mark Lindquist, it's an honor to have you on this showcase edition. Thank you so much for being with us. And Grace Malloy, Executive Director of the Gadsden Art Center, thank you for bringing this star of the wood world. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. 